Hello! Welcome to, apparently, a city filled with flying drones and snow and it's pink. I don't really know what that was. What you really need to know is that Aaron got a new toy <laughs> for running live streams. And so uh, there's more buttons available, which means that more things need to be able to happen. But um, anyway, it was very exciting. Although I said that we should sub in the one hour of kitten nap time video that we have. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to another Saturday in live stream land. I am very tired, and I have not had uh, I have not had caffeine before this live stream. So we will see what happens. Uh, yes, the I'm going to introduce you to the donut today. Today's donut is so I had the raspberry fritter, which they ran out of raspberries, so they switched it into a strawberry fritter but then they also have chocolate on it although i went down right when they opened and the chocolate wasn't totally set so it's maybe a bit more messy of a donut uh and we know that we have issues with the whole chocolate thing but i think that this is a low enough chocolate to other taste ratios hopefully it will be good so yeah it's a Strawberry and chocolate fritter. I, it's really a strawberry fritter with chocolate ribbons on the top. But Cheryl says bangs. Um, hi. Yes. Did you notice that I cut my bangs at uh, 630 in the a.m. before a call with Israelis when I couldn't get them to behave just impulsively? Haven't fixed them yet, but this is what they look like right now. So we've accepted it and we're moving on. <laughs> really? You... You should never cut your bangs like right before a meeting just because you're angry at them. It's it, it's not a good plan, but uh, yeah, they're definitely like not the most even. So, well, I'm glad I'm glad that you like them. I sort of kept feeling like last time. So last time I cut my bangs, I actually followed a bang cutting tutorial rather than my normal like twist your bangs and then just cut them and hope it works out. So I followed a bang cutting tutorial and they looked better than they had looked many previous times I had cut them. And I kept feeling like I had just done it. And then, you know, Monday morning at 630 in the morning, I realized it had actually been like two months since I'd cut them or like six weeks. It had been quite a while since I actually had cut them and followed the bang cutting tutorial. And I was like, it's fine. I've got I've got length to lose. I can just cut them. Well, okay, everybody else seems to be fine with the bang situation. I'm not in love with it, but at least from this distance, it appears to be fine. <laughs> uh, I haven't fixed them at all because I don't see anyone or go anywhere, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we are going to talk about the stimulus bill today, which I know that we keep talking about stimulus bills because this is the third one. And we've also talked about some stimulus bills in countries other than the U.S. However, at long last, we have the third stimulus package since coronavirus shutdowns began a year ago. This is also the largest economic stimulus in the history of United States stimuluses. Um, so we are going to talk mostly about the individual personal effects, what has changed from kind of previous stimulus bills, not going to dive too deep into what uh, is going to institutions and businesses. But if you do have questions about those, we can dive into them on another live stream. So that passed the Senate today. Um, the House had passed it quite a while ago. Finally got through the Senate today after an all night session called Voterama, which sounds very fun. But in fact, it's just exhausting themselves. You might hear meows. That is the cat bringing a sparkly ball in. So we may have a sparkly ball train during this. Uh, <laughs> so there was an all-night Votorama, which is essentially a thing where senators can keep trying to force votes um, on a bill to, like, force up or down votes on things. However, the Democrats pretty much had to stay together because they have such a slim majority and they needed every last vote in order to pass this through the Senate. 
Uh, so they literally just exhausted themselves all night until they voted on it. Their bill was a little different than the House bill that originally passed. Um, this was a budget rec reconciliation process, which did not require a supermajority. It required a simple majority, which is why they were able to get it through with no help from uh, Republican members of Senate. So the next week, that bill will go back to the House. Uh, the Speaker of the House, Pelosi, said essentially she really hopes to get it done by March 14th, which is when the current extension of extra unemployment benefits expires. So it looks like it'll probably pass early next week in the House, and it's very likely that whatever the Senate passed is what is going to end up in the final House version. So, Brianna says, I respect Dora's month-long commitment to sparkly balls. It has been like a month now that she's been on this sparkly ball train. Might have even been longer, I would say. We call bangs a fringe. I actually think fringe is like a a far more logical name for them, uh, which is, but however, we call them bangs here. I don't know why. It doesn't, It's. it sounds very like, 1940s victory that we call them bangs. I don't actually know the etymology of why we call them bangs, though. Minimum sparkly ball wage. Yes, that was a thing that was not included in the package, was uh, a minimum, minimum sparkly ball wage. It's actually piecemeal work that she does. She gets paid by the sparkly ball. You can even make the argument that she's a sheltered workshop, which is a real thing that affects people with disabilities being paid sub-minimum wage, which is essentially what she does. She does uh, low-level tasks as a particularly unskilled worker, and she gets paid a sub-minimum wage of cat kibble. Uh, relatedly, we, in get we had a worker protest this week because uh, paychecks were late, her subscribe and save for her food was uh, like a day off, essentially. Like she's been eating more since she's been feeling better since her surgery and her dry food was out. We were by no means starving her. We gave her plenty of wet food. However, just the, the harm of seeing the top of her automatic dry food feeder being empty for a full day, despite there still being food left in the actual place where she eats out of meant that she staged a protest and was nonstop meowing in addition to just standing on the top of her automatic food feeder going, meow, meow, and staring at us all day. So no benefits then, but her health care does seem good. She, there's actually universal feline health care in this household. It helps when you only have one person and one, one feline in the household in order to have universal feline health care. It's also single pair. <laughs> we keep a month of extra food on hand. That we probably should do that. The there's two issues with that. One, storage situation is not great. Um, our house is mostly taken over by technology and inventory, <laughs> uh, and I guess we could just consider an extra month of cat food inventory. And then the other problem was that we had dialed down the subscribe and save because we were ending up with too much back stock because she wasn't eating a lot before because she wasn't feeling great. Um, but we'll, we'll up it. Uh, who has questions about the stimulus bill? It's too early to eat the donut. So uh, should we talk about what changed? Maybe people can tell me what exciting things they got up to this week. I know a couple people that were here last week were set to get the vaccine this week. Did anybody get the vaccine this week that is here? I'm very curious. Um, <laughs> sell branded cat food combined inventory and reserve. <laughs> can you get private label cat food? You can get like private label anything else where you just like slap your branding on something. Um, we are not turning into a cat food inventory in our uh, two-bedroom apartment. That is not happening. <laughs> uh. Oh, Claire got your first dose on Sunday morning, and your parents got theirs. That is very exciting. Did you have any of, uh, like, effects from getting the first dose? Were you, like, 
you need a nap? Did you have muscle soreness? I'm always curious what people's experiences are. Oh, Latitude had their their one year anniversary with their girlfriend l last night. That's very exciting. Uh, oh, my kitty kibble. I mean, it's not the worst crossover. I got to say it's it's pretty on brand. Claire just had a sore arm for a while. OK, that's great. I'm excited to hear that. Uh, all right. Well, no one else had anything interesting happen this week, I guess. <laughs> oh. Brianna says, I could only raise my left arm halfway the day after I got the second shot. I am always surprised when shots have that effect on me because I take like a pretty hefty duty shot every week. And when I go get vaccines, the needle is so small relative to what I am used to that I never feel them going in. So I'm always like, oh, there couldn't possibly be an effect. And then I'm like surprised when I have soreness on my arm. I think probably the uh, like least pleasant shot I've gotten has been the rabies vaccine. I got the first dose of the rabies vaccine before I went to India because I was going to be living in a remote part of India and um, like feral dog bites are very common and it can take longer than the uh, recommended amount of time to get you to the hospital for your rabies vaccine. So they essentially try to or your like rabies antidote. So they tell you to get the first one if you can afford it. Um, and I had a travel fellowship or I had a, like a fellowship that I was going on. So they paid for me to get the first dose and that was the worst one I feel like of all of the shots that I've gotten as far as side effects but you know I hope someday I will get the COVID vaccine Cheryl says yellow fever vaccine is the worst is it worse than smallpox I've not been vaccinated for smallpox but I know a lot of military people or people that went to school before 1972 in the United States got the smallpox vaccine and that one is like it's not like it's like a live, it's the live virus just stuck in you. So Dean, uh, before they went to Nepal, also got the the rabies vaccine. Yeah, it was I felt like it was really significant. Um, I kind of underestimated it. It was it was also only for like 24 hours, but I I didn't appropriately plan. <laughs> <laughs> had a strong reaction been told since it's a live vaccine which means i'm part werewolf yep totally <laughs> um i hope i can get it soon too um i you know honestly i've i've gone through so many levels of emotions around the vaccine where i initially was like upset that i was last on the eligibility before children even though i think that I am at higher I mean I know that I am at higher risk to catch it um and generally have worse outcomes if I get viruses because I am immunosuppressed but I initially was upset then I kind of was like you know I want to just continue being a feral work from home person I guess I've just accepted it and you know the the vaccine timelines have been so phenomenal compared to what a year ago, we had in November, we didn't we had no idea when a vaccine was going to happen. So I think being upset that my eligibility is not going to come up till July. And that's only if the vaccine guidelines stay the same instead of in May when I originally thought I could get it. It's like, you know, you know, I've, I've come back around to it. But I, I do feel a bit like a feral remote worker. I was my day job was um 90% remote before we only had to be in the office for four hours a week for our office hours. I have no idea what that's going to look like after the pandemic because no one's had office hours in a year. So hmm, who knows? Dean says better than having 10 jabs around the side of a monkey bike bite or whatever. Yeah, totally. That's the that's the real key element there, right? <laughs> is that like one day of rabies vaccine effects is still better than, you know, having to get raced to a hospital that is at a minimum 12 hours away from the forest. So, um, and also seeing how much the monkeys 
and the forest that I lived in were sketchy, sketchy monkeys. I feel that we're like constantly trying to break in at night and like steal things off my nightstand. Feel pretty good about it. Didn't get bitten by any monkeys, but like the possibility was always there. Uh, who is cleaning out those fridges when the office is open? That, so that's a good question. I There's a couple people that have been still going back to our office, like our um, office administrator, our, who's, I guess, COO, uh, and like a couple people, they were like alternating because they still had to pick up mail and do like administrative stuff like every other week. And they, one of them said, just like so when they were at the office had slacked us all and we're like i'm scared of the almond milk that's been in here since march of last year so i have no idea i feel like it might be one of those things where like either you find someone in the office who's really into super gross things or you do it as like a collective group cleaning thing so Germany and Aldi started selling COVID home instant tests today. Apparently, they were generally out by 7.05 a.m. Um, okay, one, thank you. That is such an excellent fact to know. Um, and also, that's bananas. Wow. What? So was there like an app to tell people? Because I know people were like using apps to in Germany to like find out where uh they could get covid tests before was that were, was there like an app to tell you where home rapid testing was the office mini fridge was actually mine thankfully my boss cleaned it back out in april imagine like last april when we all thought that it was going to be like two weeks and we were going to go back to normal like last april going into the office and being like oh this is terrible and now it's a year later and if you didn't do that uh <laughs> I feel like we've we've talked a lot of th about a lot of things that might be squicks for people. We talked about shots. We talked about gross office fridges. Um, but, I, you know, I'm I'm very excited for everyone. Uh, Cheryl says it was from a gun sort of thing. Was that the yellow fever or the smallpox? I I haven't had smallpox, but I've had yellow fever. I did not find it. I didn't find it notable compared compared to the other one, but. All right. I guess we've talked about the stimulus bill now. I've procrastinated long enough. Um, so things I wanted to do was to share some tips if you want to maximize your stimulus refund, because there are a couple different things going on with this most recent round. Um, one, it is the Senate bill essentially has lowered the threshold as far as who qualifies for this round. Just like the previous ones, if you qualified and you got it, you're not going to end up having to um, pay it back next year at tax time. So it's to your advantage to maximize whether or not you get it. The reason why it might be different um, about how much you get based on your choices is that you can choose to make it either based on 2019 or 2020 income if you have not yet filed your 2020 taxes. So there is a couple reasons why you might want to do that. One, you may want to wait to file if your income is over uh, 80,000 AGI, but under 100,000 AGI. And your adjusted gross income is your gross income minus student loan interest, mortgage interest deduction, and uh, the your any retirement uh, account contributions. So if you are someone who's right on that edge um, for a single person, and then it's double that for mar married filing jointly, regardless of the number of dependents. If you are in between those two territories for your 2020 income, then you might want to wait to file until they get these stimulus checks out, which looks like it's going to be in a matter of a couple of weeks. Um, there's a couple other things you can do. If you are not on the edge for 2019 income of eligibility for getting the stimulus payment, 
Um, but in 2020, you would be. Say, for example, you lost a job or you just had lower income in 2020, like a lot of people. Um, but your income is still slightly over the threshold of $80,000. Then one thing you can do if you have the money available in your budget um, is that you can still make contributions to a 2020 Roth IRA or 2020 traditional IRA. So you can make uh, contributions that even though it's 2021, you can make them for the 2020 tax year and that will actually come off your AGI. So let's say your income was $85,000 and you uh, give 6,000, if you contribute $6,000 to tr traditional IRA, that is going to lower your adjusted gross income to $79,000 and then you'll get you know, not a ton of money, you'll get uh, a couple hundred bucks, but you would get a couple hundred bucks on your stimulus payment. Um, this this kind of strategy can make, make the most sense if you have a dependent. So there is a couple things that changed as far as eligibility. Unfortunately, though, they lowered the threshold for this most recent round of stimulus checks. The other thing they did was they made about 13 million Americans now eligible to get it. Because previously, if you had dependents like, you know, older adults, like people with disabilities that you're caring for or your older parents that you are caring for or just uh, college students that are living with you but are over the age of 17, previously you could not get a, uh, a stimulus payment for them. And they couldn't get it themselves if they were listed as a dependent on anyone else's tax return. However, in the third round of stimulus funding, now everyone qualifies for that $1,400 check. Um, even if they are like, you can claim any kind of dependent. There is no upper limit for the age. So that's one of the more exciting things and the fact that it is much higher. So it is $1,400 for each child. So I have a friend with two twins. They are married and they are going to get $1,400 for themselves, for their spouse and for each of their twins, which really adds up to a huge chunk of change. So you can see why it can make sense to strategize with your tax return. There are a couple things that you do need to remember about this. One, if you live in one of five states, one of which is Oregon, uh, they have not passed any sort of law and uh, the stimulus money is taxable. So you will have to pay state income taxes. You will not have to pay federal income taxes on these stimulus payments, but depending on your state, you may have to pay state income taxes in lovely states like my own. Uh, Pixie Dust says, what? Yes, isn't it lovely? Um, so this mostly affects uh, high tax states like Oregon, which has a high state tax rate. And uh, for income tax, we have no sales tax, which is kind of dumb. Uh, <laughs> but we uh, it, high tax states and then kind of lower population states. One of the reasons I think this was true is because we just have a... Um, legislature that isn't full time. And because of that, they just didn't find a way to bundle this in. The other thing, too, in Oregon is that we have the kicker, which is this weird refund that we get. And the kicker is based on previous year's um, budget excesses and it goes back to people. So we're going to get the kicker, but then have to pay income tax on our stimulus payments. So it's really great. Um, so if you did make over over uh, $75,000 in 2020, then you, if you made under $75,000, you will get the full stimulus amount of $1,400 for each person in your household. Um, if you are married filing jointly, you can go up to $150,000 of uh, adjusted gross income and each person will get $1,400. Then each dependent after that will be $1,400. The, they're very tight. So for each $1,000 of income after that $75,000 threshold, the stimulus goes down by $280, which means that there's a hard cap 
at $80,000, you just won't receive it anymore. Oh, Pixie Dust is asking the real questions. Uh, the donut flavor is a strawberry fritter with chocolate ribbons. Those are the real questions. Um, does anybody have any questions about how these are allocated? So there's a couple things to know. If you didn't receive your stimulus payments, either your first or your second stimulus payment, you do need to file your 2020 taxes. And this, this is true even if you have no taxable income. So even if you're someone who normally doesn't have to file, you do need to file to get that money. And you have to actually fill in the recovery rebate credit form in order to alert them. Now, if you got a letter from the IRS saying they gave you a payment, but you never actually received it, what you need to do is you need to initiate a payment trace with the IRS. Um, and that is not dependent on filing your taxes. Some people um, were that are non-filers typically because they don't have to pay income taxes because they have no income or they have uh, tax-free income. Those folks, some people used the special form that the IRS put up uh, during the summer last year and submitted so that they would get it. Most of them got it um, via their normal payment cards or they got a secondary payment card from the IRS to get it. Um, so essentially, if you got a letter from the IRS saying that the money was sent, but you haven't seen that money, you need to initiate a trace payment, which you can do on irs.gov. Claire says, wow, we're going to get so much money. I know I've seen a lot of people starting to calculate just like how much they're going to get out of this and be like, oh, that's really like a huge, huge chunk of change. So important to think about what you are going to spend that chunk of change on. Um, Anyone have any other questions? So there's about 17 million uh, taxpayers that are cut out of, based on most policy estimates, which obviously are like, you don't know how pe people's situations have changed, but there is about uh, 17 million people that are cut out by this lowering of the threshold from 100,000 for a single filer to 80,000 for a single filer. Um, but there's about 13 million young adults or uh, adults with disabilities of any age or older parents that are uh, counted as dependents on other people's tax returns that are going to qualify. So overall, it's I mean, it's a huge sum of money. Like I said, this is the most that they've spent on stimulus payments. If we got the stimulus last year, we don't need to file 2020 to get this one. Um, if you got the stimulus last year, <coughs> you do not need to file 2020 to get this one. However, if you live in a state where they are taxing the federal stimulus dollars, you need to file in that state. Um, but no, you do not need to file. And this is the big thing about how to maximize your return. If you have not filed yet for 2020, choose about when you file based on your income. So if your income is under that $72,000 adjusted gross income threshold regardless, or $150,000 if you're married filing jointly, um, then you 100% don't need to worry about your timing or anything like that. It does not matter. Um, unless you added a dependent last year. So if you had a kid, and for some other reason, added a dependent, your, you know, college student moved back in with you and is filed as a dependent on your taxes. If you gained a dependent in 2020, then you can, one, get paid back by fi fi filing your taxes for 2020 and doing the recovery rebate form. And you'll actually get back payments for those uh, stimulus payments if you gained a dependent in 2020. And then additionally, you would be able to get more. Um, so if your income in both years is going to qualify you, you don't really need to time unless you gained a dependent last year. The other, re but if you made below the threshold in 2019, but not in 2020, then you should wait to file your 2020 taxes. And if you made a, uh, below the threshold in 2020, but not in 2019, I would recommend filing as soon as possible because you're also going to get the back payments for the through the recovery rebate credit for the last two stimulus payments. 
you will, you know, get your tax refund if you're entitled to one, and then you'll also get this stimulus payment. Latitude says, I'm going to buy the jumbo pusheen that is the size of a chaise lounge. It's $382. I, mm, I don't, I mean, spend according to your values, but I really struggle with the idea that one would value a $382 couch cat. Uh, I mean, it does sound kind of amazing. Like, it's like people, rich people, you know, I have been watching a lot of rich people house tours lately. Um, like architectural digest house chores, and I am blown away by ri what rich people spend money on. So you know, use your fourteen hundred dollars the way you want to spend. Spend it. I I'll tell you what I want to spend my stimulus dollars on. What I am going to likely do is save and donate most of it. But I'm extremely I'm so tempted to buy these like ridiculous high waist yellow pants and matching waistcoat that came out today. Um, they're not actually, you can't buy them yet, but it's the pre-release for the spring collection. I've been obsessed with these particular pants, but they came out with this colorway for spring and they're linen. So they're like great for summer. They're ethically made in the EU. They are also outrageously expensive because that's what it costs to make quality garments produced in ethical conditions with good fabrics. But oh, I want them. But no one needs bright yellow pants. And I especially don't need bright yellow pants as a person who get, manages to get chain grease on everything I own. So Latitude says, I wouldn't need to buy a chaise lounge. When you put it that way, $382 for a chaise lounge is a pretty good deal. So me, yeah, I support it. I So uh, Pusheen related was that there is a thing that hangs over your monitor that is a tiny Pusheen cat that peeks over and it has a donut. And I was like, I feel like I need to get this just for the live stream purposes. Also, it's like $6, but do I need it? No. Do I kind of want it just for ambiance? Yes. Emily says, I own bright yellow pants and recommend it. Mmm, y'all are a bad influence. Ramona says, all I want to buy are flights. Alas, not yet. Okay, so... Uh, I got a price alert for $500 round trip flights from my city to Paris, which is a very good price from the West Coast US, especially in like non-major airport to Paris um, yesterday. And I was just like, I'm booking it. I'm booking it. Who cares? Who cares? And I'm sure by August, it'll be better. Everything will be fine. Um, I also, I think collectively we have probably close to Maybe we have half a million. We may have a million like miles if you add up all of the airline miles in this room right now, just waiting. So Oh, you're supposed to buy those and look at them so you remember to look at your camera during Zoom meetings? That's brilliant. Um, but also they're just very cute. Joshua says, I'll do what I can to feel like I'm I'm spanging despite my to not feel like I'm spanging despite my basic human dignity. Uh, that is I mean, that's the goal in life. Generally. Don't my my mom says don't bike in the yellow pants. But here's the thing. I manage to get bike grease sometimes on things I don't even bike in. And then. I just feel like yellow linen pants that cost that much. It's just, it's dangerous. It's just dangerous. Um, so Cheryl says, I immediately delete all the flight offers. I'm having kind of the opposite problem, which is that I am, I now feel like you almost could start buying flights for like late this year. But then I found out that there's like a new homegrown version of the, variant that popped up in Portland that is resistant to vaccines. So I don't really know. Oh, apparently you all are vegetables. That's great. Lovely. Claire says I should buy all the embroidery floss. I'm just going to say $1,400 of embroidery floss. I know that it can get expensive, but that is very expensive. Also, 
floss related uh we so we have this like on our apple tv we have like a guest youtube account that is not connected to either of our youtube accounts and we watch a lot of trash on it but i also watch like a lot of the stretching videos when i'm stretching and because of that it is completely confused and the algorithm is just constantly throwing at us things at us trying to figure out what we're actually into and the other day we found out that there is needlepoint youtube so we one opened some channel that had floss in the name and it took us a while to figure out like what was going on and she just like launched into like any niche youtuber where she's like oh yeah i'm very excited about all the projects i have to work on before I go to Needle Fest 20, Floss Fest 2020, or, or whatever. And uh, we just realized we knew none of the words coming out from her mouth. And then also, I had completely forgotten that it's called Embordery Floss. And we had to look it up because it was like, it must be, she must be into Needlepoint. That's the only thing I can come up with. Anyway, there was my not that fun story about YouTube algorithm. Nathan says, I don't wear... <laughs> I don't wear nearly exclusively dark clothes because I'm an old punk. It's because I worked in a bike shop for most of my adult life. Yeah, that's the, like, I had a job parking bikes in the morning and then outside. So it was like outside bike shop. So literally like moving even a much higher volume than I did when I worked in a bike shop of bikes. Because you're usually like, you know, just moving bikes up and down between the back room or whatever. Um, but at the, the bike valet, my whole job was moving bikes. And then... I would have to go to my other jobs because I had two other jobs. So I had like office jobs that I had to go to after that. And I just had like three changes of clothes during the day because I had like my crappy clothes that were meant exclusively for the bike ballet and that were also like good for walking back and forth all day outside. And then I would switch into my office clothes. Joshua says, I don't get flight offers, but I get a ton of Amtrak offers by mail. Yeah, the I actually stopped getting the Amtrak offers, um, but the problem is it doesn't really help because part of my day job is that I often am building Amtrak routes, um, particularly on the West Coast. No, actually, I guess I build Amtrak routes in a lot of places. So sometimes my whole day is just l like segment by segment following an Amtrak track through the middle of somewhere to create a pattern line, uh, like a KLM. And that will make me be like, yes, I have dreams. Pixie Dust says, I got a credit card for just for the Amtrak points in January. Here's what I'll say about the points credit cards game. I've been playing it hard because I, uh, my like spending is really predictable right now and i'm just like accumulating miles because there's some pretty good sign up deals for a lot of the travel cards right now because of the way like the way the credit industry is at the moment and so i have just been like yes i'm just going to accumulate all of these miles and i'm going to be locked and ready when the world comes back so that's pretty much my plan I, which is part of the reason that I, I think I've gained like 250,000 miles since last March because I was just sort of like, yes. And the other thing is that normally I'm gaining points for a particular trip. And um, and I like so I'll strategize about what cards I get because of the type of airline miles and whether or not those airline miles go to the destination I want or convert into the product that I want, like the airline product I want. And this time i'm just collecting i'm just getting whatever the high value ones are that strategically make sense to get as a card and accumulating the miles like doing the work on the minimum spends and everything uh the work but it is kind of work like it takes it takes a lot of spreadsheets and stuff um so doing the work on the minimum spends because my fig my my i have so many trips i want to go on i feel like i will just decide which which airline strategy makes the most sense? Meerkat says, I live under a rock. Is the credit industry freaking out because of the pandemic? Um, so travel bonus cards have been trying desperately to hang on to um, people. 
uh, like especially people like me that are still able to pay their bills and everything, because obviously they, they're going to have a lot of write offs of people that don't pay their debt during the pandemic. Most of the credit lending institutions, remember, are lenders otherwise. So they're dealing with their business lines of credit and all of that. Um, there's a couple things. One, they have very low interest rates now for their most profitable kind of lending enterprises. Um, uh, and then two, they are, you know, more nervous to lend right now simply because uh, that it, they don't like uncertainty. That being said, a lot of them are being very strategic because what worked in the past doesn't work right now, which I think is true in a lot of industries. And in particular, the travel credit card industry right now, they're like really struggling to come up with new strategies for retaining people because, you know, the perks that worked before are not working now. Like my very high dollars. So I have one card that I usually I will cancel cards before the annual fee. Uh, most of the like really big bonus cards will uh, have a zero dollar annual fee for the first year and then they'll charge you after a year. And the, the way they try to get you is to not have you cancel it. I will cancel or do a product change to a card with no annual fee so I can keep the line of credit, extend my age of credit on my uh, on my credit report. Talked about this in the credit live stream a couple weeks ago. But uh, I have one card that I hang on to because the benefits are so good for frequent travelers, even though it is a $450 annual fee, which I know sounds very shocking, but they also give you a $300 travel credit that you can just use to write off a travel expense. So it's roughly an $150 annual fee. And because I have a business, um, all like credit card and bank fees are uh, actually just uh, above the line deduction on my Schedule C. So it's tax deductible for me. So roughly it works out to about a $100 annual fee. And with that, I get um, lounge access at a bunch of airports around the world. I get a lot of priority boarding. I get that $300 travel credit. Um, and then I also earn five times points on travel, which I then use to spend on other travel. There's a bunch of reasons why I hang on to it. Um, it's also a fee-free card around the world, which um, no international fee cards that are also accepted abroad can be harder to find. More and more, they're easy to find, but it used to be they were hard to find. So I continue to pay for this card. They also like paid for TSA pre-check and global entry and stuff like that for me, but um, paid for me. I mean, I pay them to have the card and then that's one of the benefits. But they like made a whole new strategy where you like you get reimbursed you get fifty dollars a year of doordash credit because they were like so freaked out because everything was branded around frequent travelers like that's what made it worth it to keep the annual fee on the card they also i think february of last year announced that the annual fee was going to be raised from 450 to 550 but they walked back on that uh in march because they realized that that was a very bad way to retain that kevin says is this the chase sapphire reserve yes it is um there is another card that i like want for the sign up bonus and some of the other perks but it's another one of these high fee annual cards and i just I just can't, I can't justify two high fee annual cards. I just keep that one. Brianna says the JetBlue people don't care. I asked them if they'd waive the annual fee and they wouldn't. I told them I just canceled the card because I'm not going to benefit out of it. And they said, okay. Yeah, that has been happening. I will also say, is the JetBlue card, who is it administered through? Which one do you have? Um, because it's not really up to the JetBlue people. It's up to the, um, it's, it's up to whoever the administrator is. I have found with Barclay card, I think that they are like not in any way incentivized to hang on to customers because they just like do not care. I never get retention bonuses with the Barclay card or anything like that. Ah, uh, yes, Brianna, Barclay card is the, uh, yeah, that is the one that like universally, I, I found that experience with everyone in the like travel hacking world um, that that's kind of the, the thing. I think it's because it's, like primarily a UK bank. I don't I don't really understand. I think they just like don't care. So um yeah. Aaron says my my Chase Sapphire reserve is up for renewal in a month and I think I'm gonna hold on to it still. Yeah, mine is up in September and I feel like I will be tra I, I want to believe I will be traveling again sometime between September and the following September. So I'm probably gonna stick it around. Um 
and I will have to go on a flight between now and June 23rd uh, for citizenship purposes. So Aaron's Alaska account says available miles, 586,649. No big deal. Let's fly somewhere. I have like a, a brilliant, I have a brilliant itinerary plotted. I want to know what I can do to make it happen. I just need the pandemic to be done. And I have a plan for all of those miles that Aaron has. <laughs> Pixie Dust asked about my earrings. Uh, they're from Ome Shop, and they say smash the patriarchy on them. They also have a not safe for work version as well. But Ome Shop, O-H-M-E. Uh, you can check them out on Instagram. I think you can find them on Etsy, or maybe they have their own site. All right. Um, should we eat this donut? Let's eat this donut. We really went off. Brianna says, you are giving me Chase Reserved FOMO. Well, if you're going to cancel that Barclay card, you could try to get the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Um, Chase Sapphire Reserve has a rule. Uh, Chase, in general, has a rule. You cannot have applied for five cards within the past 24 months so usually if you do want to apply for any chase um cards you want to do it early in your history all right that was a donut Did that feel like a a happy amount of donut exposure welcome to the strawberry fritter and apparently lily just talks about churning so i know i'm not a huge chocolate fan uh, but I feel like this is not too much chocolate. So it's real strawberries inside. Ooh. They're very melty. It's like... You can kind of see the strawberries inside of them, but they're like... It, it kind of tastes more like strawberry jam. Latitude says, when shopping for credit cards, I primarily look for the heavy cards that weigh a lot. You, my friend, would like the Chase Sapphire Reserve. It's actually metal. Oh my god, this is so hard to... So, if you can see underneath, this is like, this is the Chase Sapphire Reserve of donuts. It is so heavy. Brianna says the Chase Sapphire Preserved is also metal. Everyone comments on it. Mine isn't. I've had it so long that it's not. It is. This could not smell more like a basket of donuts than a basket of donuts would, I think. It's just so richly strawberry smelling. I haven't really tasted much of the chocolate. Oh, like actual strawberry pieces have fallen out. I'm gonna lick my fingers, it's gonna be really attractive. I have no napkin. <laughs> Aaron says, confirmed I can smell it from here. Latitude says, I want to apply for the Apple Titanium card, but I don't think they will accept me until I have a job. All I have is a fantastic credit score. Yeah, they do like jobs when they lend for credit cards. I don't want to give Apple any more power. I don't want them to be a lending institution, so I'm, like, opposed to the Apple card, so. Oh, my mom smells it all the way at her house. I really don't taste the chocolate. There's like a bunch of chocolate over here, so I'm gonna... This is a fantastic donut. I would rate this five out of five donuts. This is like... 
Probably one of the best ones we've had on here. Oh, I just got a bunch of strawberry. Should I finish it? Should I come back to it? I feel like I'm eating it really fast. It's just such a beautiful color. Kevin says, FYI, the banker for the Apple card is Goldman Sachs. You know, the most ethical bank around. Honestly, they're all terrible. <laughs> There's not a single large credit institution that isn't got sins in the closet, so... Pixie Dust says, I'll stick with my Betamax card. <laughs> I have questions about how you got a Betamax card. Kevin, if you really want to dig into why all the banks are terrible, I have a podcast on the FinCEN, or I have a, a live stream on the FinCEN file leaks. And you can listen to their multi-part series on the fence and file leaks. They're all terrible. All right. That was delicious. Well, I feel like we had that strawberry donut and now we don't have to do anything else. That was delicious. Anybody have any questions about the stimulus bill? Uh, current unemployment, uh, 300 extra dollars a week is extended through September 8th. Um, they are hoping to, like I said, get this passed so it'll extend it past the March 14th deadline. Uh, so it did not go up to three, 400 and it is not the 500 of the first round, but the extra 300 a week is extended till September 8th. Yeah, Ursula says, their sins aren't just in the closet, but neatly filed in the office displayed. That is correct. This is why I could never get a job in on Wall Street. <laughs> like, there was, there was like a, uh, you know, I was an economics major. I went to like a relatively small school. So we, we my econ class had like eight students graduating. We were the largest economics class like in the history of the school. And although I think it's been usurped now, but <laughs> when when I was majoring in economics, they kept like because I worked in the career services office, I saw lots of the like things that came through that were like, oh, you should you should come like do this special program that takes you to New York for a weekend and they will show you how like financial services work so you can get a career in Wall Street. And I was always just like. I would never last in this world. Rachel says, I'm wondering what else is in it besides the stimulus and unemployment insurance. Um, they didn't do anything with student loan debt relief. Um, the $15 minimum wage as uh, was also not included in the Senate version, unfortunately. Um, so no $15 minimum wage and uh, no student loan debt relief. They say they're gonna try to do that in another bill. Uh, some of those were like arguments internally and they'll like just need to get this passed. And then some of that had to do with not being sure that they could actually legally do it in the budget reconciliation process they were using to pass this stimulus. Um, and uh, the there, uh, there is a lot of relief for tribal groups, K through 12, and state and local governments in this round. They are also um, prioritizing, there's another round of uh, PPP loans. I haven't dived too deep into the PPP loans. However, I do know that there is special carve outs for the round to go to community banks in the PPP loans with the idea that it'll be more likely to actually get to small businesses as opposed to larger businesses in this round. 
Pixie Dust says, I worked adjacent to Wall Street and even just the finance bros at bars are enough of a reason to stay away. Yeah. <laughs> I had, I was at a Harry Potter conference in Dublin and I was chatting with two of the Americans there and one of them had been a lawyer that for the past three years had been working on the Deutsche Bank, like massive lawsuit. And uh, it he just, he seemed to feel very dead inside. So interestingly, the both of them were corporate lawyers, but uh, the two husbands that I was chatting with, they were both corporate lawyers, but they were very committed vegans. And one of them had quit their corporate law job to be a lawyer for Mercy for Animals, which is a like farm defense uh, group. It's essentially like a much better PETA. <laughs> it's like not terrible like PETA is. Um, Anyway, Mercy for is lawyer for Mercy for Animals. So, of course, gets paid like a tiny amount of money. And then the other one is like, a you know, corporate lawyer that just has been working on this was working on this one financial case for three years. And they kind of considered that one of them was doing this evil thing so that the other could go be a lawyer for something they like cared really passionately about and make a lot less money. For the last PPP, is it legal to take half and fire the staff later? Probably. Um, I do not know, and I can dive into it on another episode. I haven't reviewed the what is changing about the PPP. Um, so, Dean says, same here. The $20 extra is staying on universal credit, or £20 extra is staying on universal credit until September. So, in the U.S., we get $300 extra dollars a week. And in the UK, you get 20 pounds extra a week. Is that a week per month? That is very, way too low. I once had, I had a date with a public defense lawyer turned public defense married to a weapons manufacturer. I guess we all just have to make our decisions. Um, wow, that is a very close up of the cat there. Um, Kevin said, I can't throw any stones. I work for a defense contractor. Yeah. You know, everyone makes their choices about how they get money and spend money. And you just have to be right within yourself. Uh, yes, Dora is waking up. You can see the evidence of all the sparkly balls in there. I think it's bath time now. I don't know if it's starting a full bath or if it's just a post wake up hand washing it's not even a lot of sparkly balls for that box really uh does anybody have any questions for me we really we've just wound some random topics we are almost at the bottom of the hour here so uh that was an excellent emoji collection i like how now all we can see is her tiny whiskers All right, well, how, if nobody has any actual questions for me and we all just want to comment on Dora, how about we share what we are looking forward to this week? Uh, I will start. I am looking forward to the fact that I have started running again. My Part of my acceptance about my place in the vaccine queue is that I have decided I am probably not going back to the rink till the summer. So I had to find some other outside the house activity to do to exercise. And I have really found that I do not bike for no reason. <laughs> so, uh, but I'll run for no reason, which is funny because I definitely prefer biking over running, but you have to bike so much longer to get real exercise out of it because biking is so efficient and running is such an inefficient use of energy that you get more exercise doing less. Anyway, I signed up for a half marathon uh, in September, which I haven't done a half marathon in a couple years. Uh, I started a half marathon training program, just finished my first week, ran 5K today, had a very good time for me. My goal is to run a sub two hour half marathon in September. You know, every universe willing, all of the things need to align. Um, 
that part of the reason I chose it, I've done this half marathon before. It's very small. It's outside of Portland, so I can bike there. Uh, it's actually called the Boring Half Marathon, and it's in Boring, Oregon. And if you're from Dull, Scotland, their sister city, you can come for free. They, you have to pay for your flight here, but you can run <laughs> the Boring Half Marathon for free. It's actually the Half Boring Half Marathon. Uh, it's relatively small, and... Uh, they already have adapted it to have a virtual component. So my thought is if it ends up getting canceled, I can still run it virtually. I'm not like super excited about spending $50 on like paying someone to run, but I found it's very motivating for me to train. And I have my personal record for a half marathon is two hours, zero, zero minutes and 56 seconds. So I, I was just, it was just shy of a sub two hour. So I'm hoping to actually make it this time. It's also a totally flat route. As you may imagine, Boring Oregon is totally flat. Um, so it is a lot of people end up PRing on it. So uh, Brianna's exciting thing of the week is maybe I will get donuts in the morning. I support that, especially if you can get a strawberry fritter covered in chocolate. Like I said, five out of five donuts. It was great. Uh, my dog is officially too old to go walking as frequently as we now do in the pandemic, so I can, th in theory, start running. Theory and practice is definitely a do different thing. Uh, Meerkat says, I'm not doing a half marathon, but knowing you're running will prod me on, so I'll see you in sweaty spirit. So, I never thought I would recommend, one, something made by Nike, <laughs> and two, so, like, like a running app, but what I will say, I've been using RunKeeper for seven years and I kind of like it worked. It was like auto, it, like integrated with a bunch of stuff. But I found myself being like, surely since I started using RunKeeper seven years ago, like when I got an iPhone, something new has come out. And I, d I downloaded the Nike Running Club app and they have guided audio runs, including ones that are like, based in mindfulness and stuff like that. And they are so encouraging. And um, I am doing the guided audio version of the half marathon training. And what I like is that it's very, it's like, it's encouraging, but not in that, like, I hate the like, you can do it, you're awesome, you're amazing, sort of like, I don't know, girl bossy energy. Like that is like my least favorite energy. And it's like, the coach for the half marathon program is like a guy who I would describe as just making a lot of dry dad jokes. Um, but the whole program is very like you are an athlete and you make the best call. So if today you're not feeling it in this way, it is OK to end the run early. It is fine. If you're really struggling at this point in the run, that means you started a little too hard. Like it's very it's very nice. I'm enjoying it. Um, I kind of, I needed a structured program and I previously have just done like the, if you Google how to run a half marathon, you'll find like a pace chart on Hal Higdorn. A lot of people use it. That's what I've done previously. And then before that I used Aptive, but that one I was using when I had access to a treadmill. So um, also this is the first time I've had access to and been used to running on an outdoor track. So I'm actually doing speed runs and stuff, so. Our pod members started a countdown clock for our vacation. Ooh, very exciting. Uh, looking forward to giving birth this week. Oh my God, is that already? Oh, Joe, very exciting. Um, please stay safe. I wish you very little pain and an easy delivery and everyone is healthy and happy. So I have my fingers crossed for you. Uh, after this week, I can stop learning new things and start prepping for midterms. <laughs> I like how you framed it as stop learning new things. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think Joe does have the bus best what to look forward to, especially because pregnancy has not been that great for you, Joe. So uh, I am very happy that, you know, maybe you will not be pregnant and hopefully the postpartum period will be better for your health. I hope. I don't I don't know if sleep deprivation is never great for anyone's health, but I have my fingers very crossed for you.
All right. Everyone, please stay safe this week. Sounds like we have a lot of exciting things to look forward to, mostly possibly a baby Joe, which will be very exciting. And uh, some <laughs> cute doggos at the park and midterms, which is an odd thing to look forward to, but I guess it's very exciting that you can stop learning new things. <laughs> oh, Joe is excited for the end of pregnancy. <laughs> Well, I hope the end of it is easier than the process leading up to the end of it has been. <laughs> it was like the most elaborate way to say birth. <laughs> the event at the end of pregnancy. <laughs> uh, I hope I hope all goes well and is safe and sound for uh, you. All right, folks, have a good week. Stay safe. Hydrate yourself this week. Please remember, drink some water and uh, pet a cat if you have one available. And I will see you same time, same place next week. Bye.